Hi guys, it's Joanne here. I am a artist that uses a robotic arm in my fine art painting practice. And today I wanted to talk about this painting that I created using the robot. It's my fourth painting in this series. And if you saw last week, I created this. And so I want to talk about a little bit about the code that was used to then generate this one. One of the big changes you'll notice just looking at these two is this one has a white border. This one does not. I changed the way I mount the piece. So rather than putting a green painter's tape edge around it, I mount it into this frame that I made with my matte cutting board and it mounts inside. And because it's the same thickness as the board, it actually created a pretty good edge, masked off the edge. And that's how it ended up. And the white on there, it is a wood panel, but I painted three layers of gesso before I painted the, the scene. The other thing is, and this is a big one for my back. You'll notice last video I was complaining that my back was hurting because the ergonomics of the robot table, so the table that this robot is mounted to is a steel table, and it has to be really heavy because there's a lot of leverage with the robot. And unfortunately, it's not a table that you can sit at and draw. So I was actually twisted over and painting alongside the robot. So for this one, I flipped the robot mounting backwards and now I'm sitting at my white IKEA table that I can adjust the height on and painting there. Unfortunately, I am still have to now adjust the height, which is called the Z height of the robot to get the paintbrush strokes perfect. So you'll notice the paintbrush strokes don't look as good as in previous videos, but that is an easy fix. I more wanted to test quite a few other things and just kept going despite the, the Z height needing adjustment. The other thing in this painting is I have a new shape. I have a rectangle and I use different logic to create a rectangle from the other shapes. The other shapes, I have a CSV file that holds all of the brush strokes required to make that shape. And then when the recipe requires that shape, it goes and grabs it. But here with the rectangle, I actually have it just repeating a stripe until it hits the far edge and then it paints the top and the bottom based on the size of the rectangle. Because I was thinking about how there's so many sizes of rectangles, it would be difficult to put all the brush stroke instructions into a CSV file. As you can see, this, would, this is counted as a rectangle, this is counted as a rectangle, and this one's counted as a rectangle. The other thing I did in this painting that's new is scaling. So these two circles and this circle up here and this one down here all use the same instructions. They just had a scaling factor put on the diameter. Unfortunately, it didn't work as well as I had hoped because in the previous video you would have seen with this one, a circle was just one brush stroke and it would just spiral around. And to paint a bigger circle, you need more dips into the paint and not just one brush stroke. So I'll have to update the code to consider multiple brush strokes. And I thought I had fixed it, but the, the tweak I didn't work. And that's just part of coding. You'll try a few things and test them and if they work or not and go from there. So each time I do a painting, I learn a little bit more about the best coding practices, but I'm pretty excited about this one because it's it's closer, this one looks more similar to my machine learning abstracts, which I currently paint by hand. And now to be able to paint them alongside the robot. And when I say alongside, I'm essentially collaborating with the robot. The robot's laying out the shapes and I'm filling in the color. And that allows for me to be the, my perfectionist self who likes the really solid colors. And the robot, which is good at laying out perfect shapes, it can do its thing, it lays it out, and then I paint alongside it. So it's been a lot of fun to develop code to be able to paint an abstract painting like this. So now let's go through the whole process and you can see exactly how I painted this. So here's the new setup. You can see the robot is still attached to the particle board that's attached to the steel table and I am now sitting at the white IKEA table so I can get my feet underneath the table so I don't have to twist as much although now I am twisting a lot because I'm looking up the paint recipes on my computer beside me and I in this process I mix the colors for the, the robot and for now I still paint the underpainting. You can see the new mounting of the painting where you don't see the green painter's tape all the way around. And here's one coat of the orange background. 
and now I'm doing a second coat. One thing I did learn is one of those little paint pots is not enough paint to cover a 9x12. So now I just turned on the robot, got it going, put the brush in. And now I have in the code to go to all four corners so I can actually tape the whole painting setup down to the table and have it in the correct position. Because the table can always move, I need to do that at the beginning of every setup. And this is what I was saying in the intro where the thickness of the brush stroke doesn't look right. And that's because both the height of the table and I'm still working out the code for the spacing between the brush strokes. So here's where I didn't know if the robot would place the rectangle properly. So I pulled out a ruler to make sure it actually matches what the final painting should look like. And here I'm just using a uh, piece of cardboard to lay out, help me make straight lines in the painting. This is also what I was talking about in the intro about scaling. And so it painted the circle but didn't have enough paint on the brush and I was just taking a note of that. The other thing I noticed is when it painted a circle, for some reason it didn't offer me the option to go clean the brush after that, but it does after a rectangle. Now I'm going ahead to finish up the rectangle and I'll go back and paint the green circle after. So you'll notice that the robot is paused while I'm filling in this large rectangle and then going on to do the circle. And that's because when it's done the cleaning cycle, the code poses me a question, how long would I like for the paint to dry before it starts painting again? And I just let it pause while I finish this up because I didn't know how long it would take. So I'll be able to start up the robot when I'm done these and also when I've made them dry as well. So now it's painting the purple half circle, which is also scaled up, but the results were better than when it did a full circle. So now it's painting another full circle, so my expectation is it won't ask to clean the brush before it goes to the next color seat. It didn't ask. So now it's painting a green rectangle that overlaps that purple half circle. And that green rectangle actually looks better as far as the length of the vertical lines to the other two rectangles. So I'll take note of that for when I'm coding again. Just fixing up some of the colors. So I think here's where you'll really see that the scaled up large purple circle is not getting good coverage because it did it all in one brush stroke. But that's why I'm working with the robot because I can now fill in the shape. circle. I'm just using my ruler to make sure that the lines are square and that's the painting. Let me pull the tape off so I can show you the final version. And I'm pulling the tape off the back so I can actually pull it out and show it to you. 